Let's talk about one of the more powerful capabilities of data window technology, and yet probably one of its simplest to implement, sharing data window buffers at runtime. So here we have four data window controls hosting four data window objects here at runtime. Now, as I change the value of some of these employees' salaries, keep your eye on the cone graph data window down here in the lower left-hand corner and see what happens. Indeed, as I'm changing the values of these uh, lucky employee salaries, uh, we see that there's an immediate change in the data that's being reflected by this graph presentation style data window. And let me go ahead and make an inordinate change to the age of one of these employees so we can see something substantial uh, visibly reflected in one of the secondary data windows. We see that does change the second graph presentation style. And I'll go ahead and change a few of these employees to be on leave rather than active status. And we see that that is changing that right hand graph data windows uh, bar heights. So in fact, at runtime, these three data windows on the bottom are sharing the buffers of the data window on the top. In fact, if I were to make any changes here in the primary, and if any of the secondary data windows were editable, uh, they would all be making changes to the same buffers in the single data window that is designated as primary. Next, we'll look at the very few lines of code that are necessary to set up this relationship between these data windows. But just to underscore, there was no code necessary to capture the event of that data being changed, and absolutely no code necessary to synchronize the data between these data windows. They are sharing the same single set of buffers, the primary buffer, the filter buffer, and the delete buffer of what is designated as the primary data window. And here's where you'll perform the prep cook work necessary to prepare for a data window shared data scenario. Here we have each of these four data window objects open in the data window painter. And the single requirement is, is that their result sets be identical. I'm not even going to go into uh, the design menu to look at their data sources. Uh, their select statements can be from varied tables with different columns in those different tables. The only requirement is that the data window's column specifications be identical. In fact, the result sets are identical. That means that the columns, the number of columns, uh, the data type of each of the columns, and the order of the data types of the columns needs to be identical. So there is the primary data window's column specifications. Here it is for the cone data window. And for one of the other graph data windows. You'll notice that, yes, the column specifications are identical, column by column, data type by data type, and of course the quantity of the columns and the result sets. And here we have all the code that's necessary to set up the shared data relationship between four data window controls. This is it. One line of code per secondary data window. Here is what is acting in this example as the primary data window, DW raw data, and I am one at a time assigning it what will act as its secondary data windows, the cone data window, uh, the bar horizontal graph data window, and DW bar vert vertical data window, and that's it. Then what we can do is treat the primaries if it were functioning on its own, even though it's buffered data may be manipulated by any of these secondary data windows. All we then need to do is to be able to act as custodians of the data of that single result set. And by that token, here is the set trans object call to associate the primary data window with the database connection maintained by SQLCA transaction object, and then retrieving its result set into its buffers. This has been Power Builder The Basics, sharing data window buffered result sets.